In Paris this morning, a potential landmark deal is being revealed on climate change after two weeks of talks. The agreement calls for almost 200 nations to reduce man-made emissions of greenhouse gases and would be legally binding. The governing bodies of those nations must still approve the deal. Among the key points, a five-year cycle for checking to see if emissions are being reduced and a $100 billion a year floor to help developing nations. The Paris conference is of vital interest to environmentalists and conservationists, including Dr. M. Sanjian, Executive Vice President of Cons Conservation International, who joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. How significant is this deal, do you think? Massive. I mean, for the first time ever, we are on the verge, 99.9% .9 there, of having an agreement that moves us out of a carbon-heavy emissions into a future that uh, thinks about alternate energies, that reduces our carbon load, and gets us to a path where we do not exceed a 2 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. So it's quite massive. Um, one of the best things about this deal is that we think it will have major language in there, in there that includes nature. And the reason that's important is because we know that about 30% of what we have to achieve in terms of reducing emissions comes from nature. And having that included in it for conservationists is, is a pretty good thing. You know, we mentioned almost 200 nations. Mm. How do they decide who has to pay the most? Because it would seem like an emerging economy is not as responsible for the situation we're in. And Vanita, this was one of the biggest challenges with this conference. The big challenge was deciding who pays and who gets paid. So it's clear that if you're a really poor developing country, if you're a small island nation, you didn't cause this problem, you should get compensation. But what about countries that are on the verge, like China that is continuing to grow, or India that's continuing to grow? Today they might be considered a developing nation, but in 10 years yeah. they might be in another place. That differentiation costs friction. Well, the, interest, the other interesting question here is policing of an agreement like this. How do you actually enforce it? Well, one good thing about this agreement is that each country voluntarily puts up what it can do. And there are standards they're setting. The, the U.S. wants the same standards that it's using to be applied, mm -hmm. for example, to China. But we're getting better at being able to detect and monitor how countries do in terms of emissions. I know you said this is a huge victory. It's a massive step forward. But what in your eyes was a miss? What should they have been more focused on? Is there anything? You know, I think that oceans needs a bigger voice. We, we know that oceans play a huge role in weather and in climate. And I'd like to see strong language about that. I'd also like to make sure that the financial mechanisms of taking uh, compensation for forests and protecting forests are strongly worded and really in there. Now, we can't rest. We have to keep the pressure up. I mean, we went to Paris. I just got back from Paris. And the reason we went up there is because we were asked by the UN to bring some films to remind people about the power of nature. So the UN asked us, can you bring nature's voice to the table? And that was part of what we did there. We mm -hmm. brought a, a wonderful film that was narrated by Reese, Reese Witherspoon, Academy Award winner, and also a French Academy Award winner, Marion Cotillard to France. Mm -hmm. uh, we add this film and it, it brought the house down. Ban Ki-moon introduced the segment that we were at. And I think that all those sorts of actions that include people, look, at the end of the day, politicians will never lead, right? Yeah. People lead, then yeah. politicians follow. I know it's no surprise it went down to the wire, but like you said, it's a big step in the right direction. Dr. Emerson Jayan, thank you so much. Thank you so much.